what's happening guys on dad duty as well but uh so if i keep looking off to the side i'm checking for my daughter but uh usually when she takes a nap i try to do a lot of my editing uh i was going through my macbook and saw one of the files that i missed in january it was maybe january 28th or 29th to where i was catching some of these fish in the middle of a creek and i wanted to share it with you guys talk about you know some of the baits kind of how to do this and do you need forward face of sonar to do this um, so uh, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so I was in these creeks looking for bait and I was actually, you know, using my side scan and just going down the middle of this creek and just looking both both sides. And every once in a while, I'd see a dot, I'd see a dot, and I would see a dot and would see a dot. I would see the dots on my down imaging. And I'm like, you know what? Let me turn back around. Let me get on my trolling motor and just go down the middle of the creek. And lo and behold, they were bass. And, you know, a lot of the times they may not be you know, in the bait, they may be trying to look for the bait or they may have already eaten and want to be out there and suspended in the channel. I, I don't know really exactly what it is, but that's, that's my story. Um, so yeah, I was, I was taking these baits and I was throwing it to them and you know, I was catching these fish and it was, it seemed to be pretty easy. Some of the times I was catching them, I could actually see that there was two to three fish and they were actually kind of high in the water column, believe it or not. And, uh, you know, I'll get to the, the bait weight that um, I typically use because you don't want to go too heavy on this technique. But anyway, I would see these fish and I'd throw to them and I was catching them and they were literally like in the middle of the creek to where I see these guys coming in and they're, you know, beating the bank, beating the bank, beating the bank, talking to them like, man, I, I can't find them. I'm not catching them. And I'm just thinking to myself like, hey, they're in the middle of this creek. So in the fall when they're trying to feed up or, uh, you're, you know, you're a, a bank beater and you can't catch these fish and you know that you know it's the fall toward the toward the end of fall and they're feeding up prior to the the spawn um they may be in the middle of these creeks and you guys know everybody uh now is just talking about forward facing sonar and how you know these guys are catching all these fish that are suspended and you know you can do the same thing so um if you don't have forward facing sonar, if you don't have even, you know, the, the side imaging or down imaging, that's perfectly fine too. This technique could be done without using sonar. So a lot of the time, your more narrow creeks are going to be the best, especially that has some depth to it. So your deeper, more narrow creeks are going to be your best bet. Um, I like the more narrow cr uh, creeks because as I'm panning, I can see almost wall to wall and I'm not missing anything. If you're in a huge creek and you're panning, if your sonar sonar only goes to 20 feet and the wall's, you know, 160, you're missing that extra depth to where you may be missing these fish and not going, you know, you're gonna miss out. So the more narrow creeks, the longer creeks are really, really good. Creeks that have uh, channel swings in it are really good. Um, and a lot of the times, deeper water is really, really good for these suspended fish, especially if they're chasing bait. So, um, they're the two things that I look for, long, narrow creeks that have some depth to it. So, now, as you're riding these creeks, all you need to do is start fan casting. Fan off to the left, fan to the right, cast down the middle. Left, right, middle, left, right, middle. And I was telling you how those fish are kind of suspended up in the water column. A lot of the times they are, they're no lower than five feet. And a lot of the times when I catch them, they're probably about three feet or higher in the water column, maybe two to three feet. And it's crazy, you know, you throw it out there and if you have them on your forward tracing sonar, they're coming to it at a hundred miles an hour and they eat it almost immediately. Every once in a while, you'll see one a little bit deeper and you throw to it and you gotta kind of tease them. So if you're not catching them, Here's a little tip. If you're not catching them on your fan cast and you're just reeling it in, change the depth. Throw it out, let it sink for three seconds, and then slow, slowly bring it back in. If you're not getting bit, let it sink for five seconds and bring it back in and fan cast that and continue to do that. You can still do that. Um, and I, I promise you, if they're on bait, especially during the fall in those narrow, long creeks, you're gonna catch them. You're gonna catch them. Um, sometimes in, in the fall, your early morning bite and your later afternoon bite is going to be way better to where you don't even need any kind of sonar. If you're trolling these, these creeks, and you guys know as well as I do, is, you know, you'll hear them busting all over the place. You'll see them feeding up. And all you need to do is find that spot, 
cast to them and uh, reel through them and you're, you're going to catch them. You're definitely going to catch them. So, you know, the, the technique is is uh, the most important thing. A lot of people think, of, oh, it's the forward-facing sonar. It does it help out? Absolutely. But do you need it? No, it's just like the technique. You see guys fishing a shaky head. You see guys fishing a drop shot. They're fishing deep diving crankbaits. They're face fishing a square bill. It's just another thing to kind of add to your arsenal. You don't need the forward-facing sonar, and that's why I'm kind of making that video. Um, now, in the video, I was catching them on forward-facing sonar, but you do not need it. I'm just telling you right now. If you use this technique, <laughs> she's getting out of bed. Uh, one second. Okay, we're back. Um, so, uh, one tip that I want to leave you to um, before all this and the electronics and stuff like that, one important thing that I actually learned before I had all this stuff was seasonal patterns, what these fish do, where they are during each season, and I feel like that's very, very important, and I think a lot of guys feel that due to all the, the technology that's out there that you don't really need to know that stuff, but I highly recommend understanding seasonal patterns and bass fishing habits and all that other good stuff prior to you know getting into all this electronic deal. But um, let's talk about the baits real quick. I actually really like two styles, not two different name brands. I have tons of different name brands, but they're two different styles. Um, this one right here, don't mind the head. I got 500 different heads. I'm not sponsored by anybody and anything. Um, this is just what I prefer. Now, if you look at this bait right here, it is, let's get in the camera, it's a, a straight tail. All right, so the one bait that I love is a straight tail. And when you're fishing this, you actually have to impart the action, like you do a little bit of shaking, rod shaking that is. And then the second one would be one that has a boot tail. So these are the two that I absolutely love. And um, I was talking about how they were suspended in the water column. If you are using a bait that is overly heavy, as soon as it hits the water, it's gonna drop pretty, pretty quick. Now, if the fish are very aggressive, they'll come up and get it and follow it down either way. But a lot of the times, you know, especially with the forward facing sonar, you kind of see what they do and how they react to certain like casts, certain ways it hits the water. And a lot of the times, I like using baits that, you know, as soon as they hit the water, they actually kind of go down a little bit slower. Now, obviously, if they're 10 foot, you want it to kind of be a little bit heavier to get it to them. If they're 15 or 20 foot, you want it to be a little heavier so you can get it down to them quickly. Because you guys know, especially if you have forward facing sonar, that timing is huge. And if it takes 30 seconds for your bait to get there, they're probably out of, out of range by then. So, um, I like to use lighter, lighter heads. Now, you know, I'm not going to sit here and tell you, oh, 3 16th or 3 8 I, I don't know. You you have to pick and choose that. Now, if you don't have forward facing sonar, I would have different ones. I'd have lighter versions to a heavier version to where to where you can make multiple casts quickly and cover a lot of water. But uh, they are my two baits, um, one with a boot tail and then one with a straight tail. As you can see, there was two different heads. This is a different head than this head. It's different from this head and it's different from this head. So. I use tons of different heads. Um, I can actually link down in the bio um, the ones that I absolutely love. And if you guys choose to use them or not, that's totally up to you. But you know, the, the point of this video is to show you kind of what I do in the fall, using those creeks, following the bait, following the fish, and you know, using my forward facing sonar to catch these suspended fish and to let you know that you absolutely don't need forward facing sonar to utilize this technique. But guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Continue to follow Bass and Buddy, and I'll see you next time. Peace.